Dogecoin, and the crypto market saw some good gains recently. There were some massive developments for Dogecoin that took shape this week, and I'll talk about all of them in this video. I'll also talk about some really important news for the crypto market, and I'll then look at some charts for price okay. analysis. First is the new developments for the Doge chain project. Miss Havor, who's one of the biggest Dogecoin proponents, posted this tweet today. He said, Remarkable developments regarding the Doge chain project. Influencers cooperating with this project are, at the very least, willingly exposing you to high levels of risk. Once again, stay away. He also said that this Doge chain thing has nothing to do with the good old Doge chain info explorer. In fact, it is hijacking the reputation of a well known service, making this even more confusing to the distracted shy. Another big news was that the new Dogecoin website went live today. According to the official Dogecoin Twitter handle, the upgraded Dogecoin website is now live, exiting the preview mode it had been in earlier. Basically, the Dogecoin Foundation started a community group toward the end of last year to update the Dogecoin website and form a team that could work on a future Dogecoin website. After that, 20 volunteers were therefore gathered with a range of skills, including writing, translating, HTML, CSS and graphic design. In June, the upgraded website was launched in preview mode as developers collected feedback from the community. And now, the website is finally ready. The new website features many tabs under headings like Home, What is Dogecoin, Much Wallets, Very Community, and So Dogepedia. The last one features interesting and educational pieces on Dogecoin that anyone can access anytime. The website is available in English and more than 10 languages. Explaining the utility of Dogecoin, a piece in the Dogepedia says that the simple fact is that money has utility, and Dogecoin is money. Indeed, Dogecoin is one of the few cryptos that has been used for this main purpose from day one. And then another heading talks about Dogecoin custody. It says, in reality, many of the top Dogecoin wallets are cold wallets or hot wallets controlled by exchanges and brokers, and they thus represent Dogecoin held in custody for thousands, or hundreds of thousands, even, of people. There's a lot more that happened, but before that let's look at what the institutional investors have been up to. This week, it was reported that there are 38 public firms that hold Bitcoin in their treasuries, and they collectively hold 262.6k Bitcoin worth over $5.5 billion. Also, last year, there were only four private companies that held Bitcoin, and now there are seven. Last year, when there were four companies, they collectively held 317.8k Bitcoin, but today, the seven private companies collectively hold 174.3k Bitcoin. During the 12 months, public companies, private companies, exchange-traded funds, and even countries have added Bitcoin to their balance sheets. However, the number of coins stored in Bitcoin treasuries has dropped since June 5, 2021 by around 102k Bitcoins. This just means that more institutional investors are interested in Bitcoin and crypto now, but the existing holders have become a bit more careful. Now I'll talk about one stock and company that I'm really excited about. I believe it's going to be the biggest private company in the crypto market. I'm talking about FTX here. According to Bloomberg, FTX is in advance talks to buy top South Korean crypto exchange Bitham. While no deal has been announced yet, both companies have allegedly been in discussions for several months. Bitham is one of the top centralized crypto exchanges in South Korea, along with Upbit and CoinOn. While Bitham isn't as successful as it used to be in South Korea, it's still a big move from FTX. It just goes to show that FTX is really serious about becoming the king of the crypto market. There was another news about how FTX is acquiring BlockFi, and there was another news about FTX buying Robinhood. So this just goes to show that FTX is most probably going to blow in the next couple of years. Now let's talk about Binance and what its CEO had to say about the current state of the crypto market. He believes that it's time to build rather than hold, as the utility is growing across the market. Net users and institutions in crypto are growing despite some failed projects and few sellers. Binance CEO also reminded everyone that activities surrounding fundraising, investing, transfers, micropayment, remittance, DeFi, NFT, and Metaverse are growing. Also, the failure of some projects and selling by a few people have not changed the fundamentals. Moreover, net users and institutions are increasing. Now let's talk about ETH for a minute.
Lucas Aldunuro, the director of research at data analytics startup Into the Block, recently posted an Ethereum chart that demonstrated the historical data of ETH's net issuance, as well as its projection beyond the merge. The key conclusion was the ETH will become deflationary after the merge. Also, Vitalik Buterin has confirmed the same. Basically, the decrease in circulation supplied will increase prices under the right conditions. The deflation of Ethereum could result in its price decrease, which could be beneficial for the investors due to increasing their purchasing power. For instance, back in March, Bitcoin's inflation was 5x lower than the US dollars at the time and was decreasing. This was happening as Bitcoin's inflation rate was following its pre-programmed, fully predictable downwards trajectory. Basically, this move for ETH will be very beneficial for ETH and we need to be prepared for it. Now let's come back to Dogecoin. So we know that Binance's new lock staking program for Dogecoin stirred up quite the confusion on social media. After that, Ms. Habor, the same guy we talked about earlier urged investors to steer clear of the exchange's latest venture. Ms. Habor questioned how it was possible to stake tokens of a proof-of-work-based model. However, after that, Binance came forward to clarify the matter. According to Binance, the tokens will not be lent out for additional profits and the tokens would remain in custody with the exchange. They said, there is no on-chain staking of LTC and Doge for network validation since these are non-proof-of-stake tokens. The user funds remain with Binance and we have very strict risk management controls to ensure their security. So basically, we don't have a lot to worry about when it comes to Dogecoin staking. It's a bit different from traditional staking, but it might be worth looking at. Also, I'm sure that it'll have a positive impact on Dogecoin's price in the near future. Now let's talk about Dogecoin's price analysis. So, Doge soared up almost 14% between Tuesday and Thursday. On Wednesday, the Federal Reserve raised its target rate by 0.75% after raising rates by the same amount in June. During the press conference that followed the decision, Fed Chair Jerome Powell took a dovish tone, saying he doesn't believe the U.S. is in a recession because of the strength of the labor market. And this had a positive impact on the entire crypto market. But still, it's my responsibility to present you with the complete picture. There's one big move from the government that we need to be wary of. So, U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren said that too many crypto firms have been able to scam customers and leave ordinary investors holding the bag while insiders make off with their money. She stressed the need for stronger rules, urging the SEC and Congress to take action on crypto regulation. She said, Congress needs to act, but the SEC has a responsibility to use its authorities to put guardrails in place and crack down on crypto actors that break the rules. I've been ringing the alarm bell on crypto and the need for stronger rules to protect consumers and financial stability. Too many crypto firms have been able to scam customers and leave ordinary investors holding the bag while insiders make off with their money. And this could be really bad for the crypto market, including meme coins like Doge, because things like this just create a lot of FUD in the market. This is bad because the fear and greed index is finally increasing, after months of being between 15 and 30. And so it's these comments that could bring this metric down again. On top of this, it could lead to the SEC tightening its rules on crypto. And we do not want that because it would again lead to another sell-off. No one wants restrictions on their crypto, and I'm hoping that the SEC doesn't come into the picture soon. Now, let's come back to Dogecoin's price analysis. On Friday, Dogecoin looked to be printing a shooting star candlestick on the daily chart, which could indicate lower prices will come during Saturday's trading session. If Dogecoin drops lower over the weekend, the crypto may find support at a lower ascending trendline, which Dogecoin has been trading above since June 18. Also, Dogecoin is trading above the 8-day and 21-day exponential moving averages, with the 8-day EM a trending above the 21-day, both of which are bullish indicators. The crypto is also trading above the 50-day simple moving average, which indicates longer-term sentiment is bullish. It should be noted that Dogecoin is trading about 40% below the 200-day SMA, with the 50-day SM a trending under the 200-day, which indicates the crypto is still in a bear cycle as crypto winter rages on. Also, according to Into the Block data, Dogecoin sits on a very important support level 6.7 cents, where more than 78k addresses purchased nearly 44 billion Doge.
the new Dogecoin addresses created daily have surged by 265%, increasing from 14.4K to 38.4K new addresses per day. Basically, the increasing network growth is a positive sign, which could soon be reflected in Doge price. If Dogecoin is able to hold this support level, it is highly likely that Dogecoin could to 8 cents, which will be a 14% increase from its current price. And I think it's quite probable that Doge will make this move very soon.